asked a lot of people who your top four teams at Worlds would be. It would be Top Esports, Dom Juan Gaming, JD Gaming, and then maybe G2 as number four. Well, Suning beat G2 in the group stage. They beat JD Gaming in the quarterfinals. They're currently beating Top Esports in the semifinals, and they would have to beat Dom Juan Gaming to win the final. You can't get a more impressive run than beating the four best teams in the world to hoist the Summoner's Cup, and they're part of the way already. That definitely would be true if they can get there. I would put some brakes on this hype train that is rolling out of control here for suiting, though, because I do still believe Top Esports is the more flexible team. And I expect now that they actually get red side, which both of these teams have higher win percentages on red side than blue side because of their preference for those counter picks, especially for top side, uh, they will be able to make the adjustments where top esports are recognizing the main play that Suning go for are these mid game team fights where Wang Feng has already farmed up, Angel has already farmed up, um, and they're running off of their, their top lane priority from Bin. So if top esports adjust accordingly, get themselves a front line, get themselves something they can team fight those mid game team fights with way better than a Jace pick, uh, I think they'll be set up for a lot more success because that Jace blind um, was definitely a little weird uh, and probably was the, the straggler here in the last draft. Yeah, I would like to see maybe that Cyan that he played so well against Fnatic a little while ago. You're seeing the same matchups in a lot of places. Ezreal answers Jin. Lee Sin is the jungle takeaway pick here. What I find interesting, though, is top esports have not banned away Kindred. This is a champion that we have not seen Karsa play all split. We saw SOFM pick it up for Worlds, did pretty solidly on it. But he's like, it's okay. I've got other champs in the pool. Maybe an AP jungler like Evelyn makes more sense. Ezreal, yeah, definitely very comfortable for Jackie Love, his most yeah. played of the year by far. Uh, the Zoe we were looking for last game uh, is picked up, so you do have range for range here. Uh, I like this for Sooning. When you have Jin plus Zoe, you have definite possibilities for those mid-game groupings. Um, you can get poke damage. You can really easily fish for these snares. Zoe Bubbles and Jin Ws are so easy to throw out with very low cost, and yet the reward is so high if you do actually find somebody with it. So is there gonna be an answer to Zoe before the last, uh, you know, before the next round of bans can come through, I should say. Knight gonna hover the options right now, trying to figure out what he can do against his old team. Suning was his initial foray into the LPL. They dropped him after a split. Angel replaced him. Next year, Knight came back and Top Esports got better and better and better. Two Orianna games in a row gonna be his options here. And now we get to see bands come through. Both teams have the exact same three roles. And Orion is not really not a spicy pick into into Zoe. Um, Zoe with the outrange uh, and outplay possibilities on the Orianna. Orianna so much more utility and, and team fight oriented here. So Angel should be super comfortable on his Zoe um, as he always has been. And we'll look at the support role for the main bands because again, that's where a lot of the playmaking is going to be since uh, we also already had Kindred and Lee Sin locked in for for the junglers. They're still looking for some front line here. And Yumi has been a pick that Yuan has played a bit with the Ezra. However, it was like a 50% win rate in the LPL. And for a champion with, or a, a team with a 70% win rate, going three and three is not as good. So though it is a ban because it's a common uh, pairing, still want to see if Leona is left available because that is more likely than not what actually comes through. I'm waiting to see though if that is going to be the case as they do still want a bit more engaged. Wouldn't be bad to join the Orianna and Lee Sin on the way in. Vladimir, interestingly, being banned away on the Su Ning side. I actually would have thought Vlad might have made sense considering so, the AD jungler. Yeah, maybe they're thinking blind Gangplank then for Bin because uh, Vladimir, super good pick into Gangplank. Um, if, if they went with the Orn, it would be their first Orn in a very long time, 30, 39 games now, uh, yeah. I believe, uh, for Bin. I think uh, it's the Taunt Hover. I, I think, it's like, yeah. look, this champ that we always I ban. There is a decently high probability with the Vladimir ban that they do go with the Gangplank, though. So uh, it is oh, going wow. to be, the, gonna be the, the first Orn in quite some time here for Bin. They are really throwing down. They are almost predicting the adjustment of TES, I feel like. And, and they want to have the ones with the team fight, the guaranteed yeah. long engage startup here. And since you're already looking at the Leona pick in there so for, for support, the other biggest counter to Orn of the Braum for the team fight later can't get picked up. 
So I do like it there, and they kind of jump the gun, and they, they take the Orn first, only to have Gangplank answered on the other side, kind of as expected here for 369. Sure. So it is going to be counter pick this time around for Top Esports. Every single time so far this series, we are seeing Top Lane pick last on the red side. Make sure you know your matchup, and then try to make it look good. Now, once again, it's still physical damage, jungle top on the TES side. Bin can fairly easily do armor stacking, and if he's not dead in the first six levels, it's going to look pretty good with the Sunfire Cape and Ninja Tabby. So and we'll see what that looks like. Yeah, and I would definitely say this Gangplank into Orn pick is a lot about, hey, we are going to be playing off of this Leona. So Gangplank Ultimate is what he has over the Orn for the early stages for that global. And you want to use that to follow around the Leona. This puts a lot of emphasis on the playmaking for your support because Leona is so good at roaming around. You can either set up the plays in bottom side and have that uh, AOE combination, or you can just use the Gangplank Ultimate on those support roams linking up with the jungle. All righty, it's time, time for the players to do it all now. Final words from coaches have already come through. The champs are locked in, the lineups are there. And it's time for Top Esports to find their way back into the series. We are on to the rift for game two of our second semifinal at Worlds 2020. One of these teams will be representing their home country for the three-peat of the LPL at the World Championship. And the chance to win Worlds on home soil for the first time since 2014. And Karsa is being invaded upon, and I don't believe they know. They see the journey. Now they know. He saw the journey, and Karsa's like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I don't like magic. No magical journey for you. Please. Uh, one of the things the analyst test did touch on at the beginning, the top of the day, though, were the level ones that have been so standard for TES. And that magical journey rewards Sunung with a deep ward and nothing more. Counter ward on yeah. bottom side, though. This is your standard reaction anytime you do sniff out that invade. Thank you, observers. You mm -hmm. point out the ward here uh, as uh, Jackie Love was the one to actually walk deep into enemy territory and use his trinket first. Now, what's interesting is you don't actually know for sure if people have recalled away just yet until you see them on the ward. You're not sure what Sword Art and everyone else were up to, but now they're spotted as they go for leashing, and it's going to be okay. Karsa can walk up and take his red buff here. 369, of course, spots Ben, and everyone's going to be safe with red buff leashless starts on both sides. I think I want to point out, by the way, is Bard wants to learn Q and W, in the first two, maybe even three levels, two points Q is not that uncommon. This is going to really, really hurt early lane pressure. Sword Art has only auto attacks and passive for early lane pressure. Yeah, that's well, here, that's why we're seeing the engage. Yep. Exhaust already burned on Ejaculus. We can't auto quite as hard. They're going to hit him back a little bit. But, you know, honestly, not so bad. This is going to feel pretty comfortable. Potions already burned on a couple of different players here. I think both Wanfeng and Sword Art had to pop that. But he's got four potions. Not going to be too bad. Two for one deal on summoner spells. Special in the bottom lane, freak. Yeah. Uh, are you are you buying? Because yes, are definitely buying, and they're rushing for the level two. You see how they're, they're trying to it. crowd the minions right now. Yes, sooning our Bassett backing off. They they seed control. They've lost the the war over the damage on minions, and that is to be expected. As you talked about, when you do start the magical journey early, there is a price that you're paying. Uh, you, do, you either lose out on that lane pressure or you lose out on what a lot of bards used to do is, is leave your health packs around for mid laners for the, for the solo lane impact. Yeah. You get neither of them there. Meanwhile, though, uh, junglers actually, we this time have Karsa making some sneaky moves as he gets around for a possible look towards mid. I think he was looking for Raptor uh, counter still here. Maybe a SoFM was going for that one, but wasn't. Says, okay, Kindred basically, I think you actually probably saw Kindred moving. Uh, based on how the red buff was killed and said, okay, we know Krug's drop, I can steal this one away. Mm. But this is two games in a row. Karsa is not going for heavy clearing. He's playing the exact same champion, the exact same side SOFM did last game. SOFM went for the full six camp recall clear. Karsa Got him. going for an invade. Now fight bot side. Yes, indeed. Plenty of damage here towards Sword Art. They're going to land the Q. Magical Journey's away. That's going to be helpful. Miscommunication. <laughs> Jackie Love is on the wrong side. And SOFM is right behind him. Where are the teleports? Oriana's got to come down. When can they get away? Flashes across everybody to run away for this one. They will live, but it burned so many resources. Those are big cooldowns. Yes, the only discrepancy here in favor of Top Esports would be the teleport that Knight holds onto, whereas Angel tries to make that trap come complete on the bottom side with uh, SOFM walking down through the jungle. They thought they had them fully collapsed upon. In their reward, yes, bottom side for Top Esports now have to play a lot more defensively. They're the ones blowing all their flashes. First Kindred Mark is top side right now, and everyone's around to contest this one, so we're not sure if SOFM yet can guarantee that Kindred Mark, but 
Definitely something we're gonna watch for. 369 pushed in early on, has not taken his first recall yet. Gonna do so right about now, try to finish Sheen. SOFM with mid control, gonna have no problems here at all. Kinder Mark number one gonna come through. And we'll do our best to keep track over the course of time. Manage to get the first mark off the first set of scuttles. Yep, first one there, you can get off the scuttles. Then the next three, uh, you can get off the shallow camps of the Raptors or Gromp um, or Scuttles. And then once you're at that four, that big uh, break point where you get your giant 75 in uh, increase into your range, then you have to go deeper in uh, to the deeper spawn camps, the Krugs uh, and the Wolves or Buffs. So easy early ones to pick up. Let's see if they actually turn their sights towards the early dragon, though. With the change that we've seen in the bottom lane standings here, since we opened up the game talking about Gangplank Ultimate, and the big reason here for this pick for 369 for top esports is to try and play. Oh, he actually splits them. Doesn't stop you the recall there. Um, regardless, though, the big reason to pick that Gangplank is, is for that ultimate and the possibility of playing off your Leona pressure. Uh, a lot of that kind of relieved by Sooning, going aggressive, getting some of those uh, flashes down on the side of TES. Possibilities are still definitely there, though. You know, Sword Art's offensively blown, uh, blown flash there can also be punished just as easily as a defensively blown one. Nice little free summoner heal. Going to mean that that poke did nothing to Angel. Going to have no problems dealing with this one. Drake has spawned now, five and a half minutes in. And Sooning, small gold lead so far, and that's with fighting a gangplank. He does print a bit of free money. That'll start stacking up as time goes on. Aggressive Ward comes down. They know they're not spotted. Hoping for an interesting play. Is someone going to run through the jungle? Not just yet. Sword Art walking back normally. Swifty's Rush comes through for Huan Feng. No surprise there. Jackie Love making the right choice in building the pickaxe half of Manamune. I think Tier by itself is actually a really yeah. big power trough. Speaking of which, that's what Knight has, but mid lane's less volatile. Plus, especially if you are trying to play off of, you know, this this possibility of bottom side plays, you'd, you'd rather have that, you know, upfront damage right now. Uh, it is about to be level six. There you go, four, three, six, nine. And he even took the extra fairy charm in inventory along with the sheen to make sure he's going to have enough mana to try and use the ultimate for that uh, bottom side play. I would say that Sooning should be looking for this also, though. As much as top esports, you know, trying to plan around this, you should always be looking at the win conditions for your opponents. And it's going to be pretty easy to get the small parts, uh, parts of the chickens, but the, the mark itself was taken away. Karsa took that camp in time. SOFM showed up about three seconds too late, and it will remain only one mark on the Kindred, but gets to fight over the red buff. Yunjia going to be spotted out by a nice trap. Wanfeng. Yep, he's like, I can actually just see you right now. Side steps as well. No problems, but now a fight into the midside. A lot of damage. Angel gonna get away. Has to burn his real flash to do so, but stays alive. Karsa's first gank results in a summoner spell going away. As now, SOFM shows in the mid lane. Knight hastes and walks out. Not gonna burn too much to deal damage to him. Exhaust also used here for Sword Art. So again, we're stacking up these cooldowns that are being burned around this dragon area. I'm kind of waiting for it to open up here with, uh, with Hop's plan to try and see if they do force on an early dragon. See if we get the reset off here first to try and buy. Nice, they hit him. That's gonna be the recall stop. And of course they know exactly where he is because you can tell that connected. And it looks a little bit different. So he knows what's going on down there. Been trying to shove with the wave. Of course, the chain vest is already in. The time to gank top is pretty much past. Yes, it's possible, but the expenditure of resources is gonna be really high, especially when you can just counter punch and take a Drake. So seems like he's gonna be on an island for a while over there on the top side. But again, you mentioned it before. It's why you pick gangplanks. So you can ult somewhere else and play around that Leona and have that happen somewhere else. So waiting for that top esports player on bottom side. Mid matchup is pretty interesting if we consider this plan as well, because uh, Knight getting his blue buff now, plus the tier that you mentioned him starting with, uh, Orianna really focuses on just pushing that wave, trying to make sure Zoe doesn't get to roam around for bubbles. SOFM, nice hop over the back of this dragon. He's gonna take that objective before they even get a chance, even with the Scuttle Crab there. And you see the pings and the uh, support roam already to the top side for Yian Jia. It looks like it's going to be top esports. As soon as they hear the dragon roar, we'll immediately try and answer with the uh, early top side. Let's see if they can do it. The Herald is alive, but maybe people can get there to defend in time. Sword Art walks by, says, hello, I picked up some chimes. I'm running fast. Don't worry about it. A couple of uh, caretaker shrines for Angel. Make sure he's going to feel okay. He is down in CS, and then Karsa indeed There's is going to try. But that ward is going to spot the fact that they know it was at least leashed. Now, Karsa's not going to follow in. So theoretically, now that they watch it go away, they know what's going on. And we'll see if Sooning is going to play around this very much. SOFM pretty easily sustains himself, knocking down camps on Kindred. And 
can very easily contest this Herald if he needs to. So, interesting exchange of information. They saw SOFM walk over towards Gromp, so they're going to actually start off the Rift Trail, but the ward still is there and Sword Art's coming. So, Sooning not giving away that they know. That's one of the biggest things. You don't want to use your movements too early to alert them. 4K health going to go for the engage now. The ulti is alive for SOFM. Q, I believe, didn't land, so he can't follow regardless. Takes the ignite, walks away. Still playing for this fight, though. Smite is up for Karsa, is up for SOFM, but no he's gin. not going to contest. So, he's going to pop the eye, going to burn the smite, lay in the Q, and the top esports swag comes down. They do get Herald, and this, doing all the research, was what I expected to see. Top esports getting top side objectives and soon get them bottom side objectives. Yeah, and they leave the Jin down bottom. So one point, he never even starts walking up towards that Rift Herald. So you know that Sooning not going to try and contest there. I think is the wiser call for them. And Jin does get the minion wave into the tower. Jackie Love actually only lost out on a couple, though. He didn't lose out on too much since he had uh, the earlier push. And one point had a long ways to go. And he's able to get back just in time. Yeah, power spikes, of course, a bit different. BF, Sword, plus upgraded boots, way better than pickaxe tier. So on Fung, yes, with some lane control kind of regardless. And hey, cashing in a plate is going to be pretty good. Now, the expected value of Herald, I would say, is very often just two plates. If you've got a winning lane, you can get more by knocking the rest of the turret down. But very frequently, you're just getting that much money. And, and half that was earned by Huan Fung just shoving in bot side. All right. Let's see about the top side, though. Because, I mean, he actually he shoved it in, but he didn't, he didn't actually get a lot of damage on the turret. So... I don't know if he's able to mine out enough to make that worth it, since you also get decent experience uh, yeah. on that side. And, uh, and Jackie Love got back to the turret fairly quickly. Yeah, I mean, we knew one plate dropped, um, and I believe that was because of the support roam. But regardless, yeah, it's like one or two minions lost away on the Jackie Love side. A little bit more of a tax down here, but now we can see 369 gets Demolish available. Going to pretty much get the entire plate up there, but has to dodge turret dagger. And you can see he's actually <laughs> aiming at damage. Here comes Bard. <laughs> Better yeah. run. He's got pings all over him. <laughs> Looks like it's not going to be a time, though, and uh, Gangplank easily able to get away as they do get alerted for the double roam, too. This should be uh, some power play bottom side for top esports. They just saw both jungle and support roam up to the top side. So you can see already Karsa and Yuanja grouping up to get some deep vision for themselves, too. Brick number two spawns in just two minutes. Suning, of course, got the first one, and then SOFM for the entirety of game one outsmited Karsa to claim the dragons and prevent Soul at the last kind of possible moment, Suning mounted that comeback and mounted that defense. We've still got a very close game. 100 gold continues to separate these teams. Drake on one side, a Herald waiting to crash on the other. It's gotta be used the next two minutes where the plates will drop. And I think the vision setup is so important for this as well, because if you're looking at the champions, um, you have so much pick potential from this side with Sword Art, Bard, Ultimate ready. Uh, sticking somebody in place for easy bubbles to land, easy gin follow up there. It could be really bad if you don't have enough control wards in place for the setup here. And this whole time, SOFM just hard farming away here on the Kindred um, is clearing a bit quicker than Karsa, getting his level lead uh, and getting to the point where he can and try and be that extra force to fight over and contest that vision. Sort out right now, gonna have no problems knocking down some of the wards that were trying to spy on their own jungle. No problem at all. Zara Karsa, you're not going to get to fight me. I'm going to play far enough back that we're going to be safe here. Yunja comes in and does something similar, knocking down more of the wards inside the jungle. And we're going to have this contest coming soon. 45 seconds until this Drake spawns. And that's going to be probably the first big fight of the game. Trinity Force is done for 369. Manamune decently stacking up. If Jackie loves recalls, I believe he can afford Sheen. I'm not sure he can actually make that play happen just yet. But 369 cashing in now topside as he gets his items done. He got two plates in about as many minutes. And both top laners having teleport means that it could be a much more explosive fight if both teams decide to fully commit everything. I'd say one big, dis big discrepancy is Zoe item build versus Orianna item build. When you go for Luden's Echo first, uh, Zoe, you have a big power spike there, lots of burst damage that can come through. And the Archangel still takes a while to stack up and get your full value from, uh, you know, Seraph Shield and stuff like that. But here's the fight. Big fight at the bottom side. They kick one back. That's him. Gets the ulti off. The stuns aren't going to matter. And here comes the re-engage. First blood for Angel. And the teleport's already in for Bin. Not going to be answered by 369, just the ult. So it's going to be plates taken topside. But first blood and an easy second 
Strange Right going to come through for Suning. Yeah, if I need a video to explain the Zoe with Ludens completed already at uh, 13 and a half minutes, Freak, that's it right there. He comes in, gets the extra kill, finishes it off, teleports topside to try and defend this tower from 369, who's been just working away on it too. And because of that pick, it is now Suning two dragons, stacking up, all going according to plan. And since they made the adjustment, stepping away from what they've done for Oh, 38 games and putting Bin on the Orn, they also have the team fighting in the front line to try and play off this dragon stacking. I don't think Karsa ever got to summon Herald because I think mid and bot look totally fine. And I mean, top, that damage was all 369. So the top Herald play if, did nothing. Yeah, I mean, so look, he's got it right now. If you die with, uh, with Herald, it's one of the worst feelings if it expires in your fountain. But here's another look. Boom! Yeah. You don't even have to wait for it, Jin follow up. It is uh, Luden's Echo, Zoe, Q hitting. Nice job there by Angel. Signature champion and all. Now he's got spell penetration on top of it with his Sork shoes and, and some more safety for playmaking with the Zonias coming in. And as you mentioned, yeah, it, it, yeah, so Jungler, it feels so bad to die at the time and then have your, your held expire while you're dead yep. and you can't summon it. And at the end of the day, the gold is still top esports favorite, but again, that is Gangplank doing most of that one in terms of, I would say, you know, total minions killed and objectives completed. I still favor Su Ning right now. And that's pretty good because Kindred is going to outskill his Lee Sin pretty heavily. Kars has got Ninja Tabby, and we'll see if he goes the Lethality or the tank version of Lee, but his days are mostly beyond him outside of synergy with the squad, kicking people outside of Kindred Ult, things like that. But you got to get things done from someone else. Essence Reaver halfway done for 369. Like, he's rich, and that's good for top esports. I mean, this is a player they play through so very often. He got counter pick. He got three or four turret plates. Like, yes, he's going to be one of the big leaders, but it's got to happen. And I have to say, one of the big things with the game plan that we we're looking for coming in, they never really got that big Leona plus Gangplank ultimate play. Maybe now it happens, but he's falling asleep. Falling asleep, rooted in place. Jin ult comes in yet again. He's got to run away. He'll stay alive. Easy pick up there on the Herald comes through. And a couple of shots mean that it's a disengage on the top esports. Second Herald picked up there by Suning. And they can crack a turret with it. I mean, people didn't talk about Angel that much. But when they did, a lot of it was for the Zoe, too. And him finding these picks. Again, it's so low cost for Zoe to fish for these. He just continually finds the Q hits. He finds the sleepy trouble bubbles. Now he might be a little bit of a bait. Two in brush. They're on the ward. Angel's alone now. He does have teammates, but they're staying in fog of war. SOFM now shows himself, and there will be a place where so it reveals as well. They're going for the TP. This is a five versus three. This is the comeback potential for top esports. Angel not going to have an easy way out. They land the E, they land the Q. That's going to be a stun lock. They should get that kill, no problem. Shockwave comes in, and they will find a single kill. But they expended absolutely everything to find only a single kill. Yep, and that bottom turret is gone. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Bin's taking that one all the way home. Cash is in right there for the bottom side. It is definitely a big kill there, especially since uh, Zoe's such an annoying champion to deal with, and uh, they continually have been poked off these objectives. Last time with the Paddle Star, then uh, at the Rift Herald with the Sleepy Trouble Bubble there. Knight, uh, or, uh, 369 eventually answers here with the top side, finishing up the work that he's been doing all game long. Yeah, the difference in getting first turret itself is 150 bonus gold. That 150 bonus gold went to Ben. Now, I would say that's one of the least important champions to get extra money on. You're going to be happy on Orin kind of regardless. You're always going to be a big front tank line, and getting a third of a Ruby Crystal extra is probably not going to make or break this game, but it still does mean he's done well for himself. Top Esports, their 1,000 gold lead, going to feel good for now. Keep in mind, in two levels, Bin gets to upgrade his items, add 2,000 gold of stats to his own inventory, and we'll see if Top Esports can start contesting these Drakes soon. Yeah, I mean, uh, SOFM also scaling really nicely here with the Kindred, uh, another damage source for them. They're feeling extremely good about the early stages of this game and how it's gone, considering the game plan laid out. I will say that you have your Seraphs transformed for Knight, so you have your extra shield, your extra survivability for this Orianna, but it is pretty difficult to, to get that combo that you're looking for from the TES side, unless 
Yuyan Jia, who has been the most criticized player of the team, steps up really big. There's so much on his shoulders as the Leona. You hold this team fight together. He's got to be the one to find the combination here onto Angel to lock him down because Huang Feng has a cleanse, has the flash himself too. Um, it is going to be difficult on Angel with the double mobility summoners, but that's what TS have to look for. SOFM can to do Kindred builds that are SOFM a bit unique. Uh, <laughs> three games of Kindred, three games Edge of Night on that champion. Loves to play uh -huh. provision control. Does a good job of that one. So here we go. Drake number three on the board right now. Kars is already at half health. Angel is finding the poke. And he has an extra ghost to Ooh. fend for himself. There's a stun lock, though. And they're going to instantly delete Sword Art. Jackie gets the kill. Juan Fung opens up, and he's shut down Karsa. A big jump right there. And suddenly, no jungler on TES's side means no chance to take the Drake. And that's what FM, uncontested, grabs Drake number three. Oh, and they're not done here. Angel throws out another bubble. Flashes in for some damage, gets the ulti off in time. They can't kick him out. This is going to be a re engage, a knock up, and a kill just on the Jackie but it's traded one for one. Now the three on three continues. 369 ulti separates the squad for now. Bin left alone, but he's so tanky, he's hard to kill. Another Q is going to land the, the Drowsy as well. Not going to find it just yet, though. Yunja gets away. 3v3 on the map, but 3 to 0 in Drakes. And the critical part here, Freak, in the aftermath, the dragon does go over to Sooning. As you mentioned, soul point here now. Finally go for the crab, definitely well worth it. But the tower's going down as well. So even with those kills, going to the side of top esports, objectives here for Sooning. And Bonk goes the turret. Two turret kills for Bin specifically. He's been there for the team, had to blind pick, and he's deathless on Orn. Looking really good so far. And this is looking more and more like Sooning headed to a 2-0 start to the best of five. And this actually started in a dream scenario for Top Esports, where we're talking about, oh, Yuyanja has to make a big pick. They walked right into him to give him that opening. But Angel finds the counter here. Again, he gets Karsa, and they take him down. Without that, there's no jungler left, so uh, they move in here from the side of Sooning. SOFM, as you know, does go down in the end. They still get the objective. And Jackie left kited off the Kindred ult. He couldn't get back in in time. Went down pretty quickly. At least the critter kills away, but this is Sooning favored now as we wait for Ocean Soul in three and a half. Top Esports, he mentioned the Leona engage being the way to make this one happen. So far, they haven't been quite enough in this game. Sure, he's got perfect participation. Sure, he's deathless. Vision. Bard ult used for vision. Yeah, didn't know if Top Esports were doing that in the fog. Shields come out, they'll stay alive. Sword Art just journeys away. He's gonna be fine as he looks at his old teammate inside the jungle and says, all right, never mind." Blue handed off to Jackie Love. Yeah, I think that's a worthy cooldown to use because you, you don't need the Bard ultimate to come up with a big pick at this stage of the game. The game is already going in your favor. So just use it to take away the small chance that TS might be using some sort of crazy Baron thing to, to really pull this one back. Like the use of the cooldown there, the safety from the big shot caller here, Sword Art from Sunni. And if I'm Sunning, I'm actually happy to play just for the Drake and, as people like to say, coin flip at it. Because that's the been the better smiter so far this series. Like, it, it, you know, he, he 2 owed him so far in the first game. I mean, so far, so good in, in this one here as well. And if if Karsa ever does show up, oh, that's a, there's a flash kick. Is this slow into Huan Fung? He's trying to get away, but where are you going to go? Flashes into immediately slowed, then stunned, then cleanses. Q's going to come in, and Shockwave finally guarantees a nice big pick. It means the bot laner is gone. Is Baron even on the plate, though? So Karsa takes it into his own hands, uses the flash to finish it off. Really clean pick here from top esports, and they have to use this for an objective pressure here. They're cleaning out all the vision around the Baron. 23 seconds left on Huan Feng, though, means that there's not a lot of time to work with. That's true. And now the Ornal's gonna come in mostly, it looks wave. like, for wave clear, and that's gonna be fine because the cooldown's gonna be up in time. 100 seconds is all it takes to have it ready for the next Ocean Drake. But top esports, they, you know, get an Ornolt out to make them kind of feel safe. They get a bit of damage in mid turret. They get to knock down bottom turret and get a couple of these lanes under their control. Now it's time to recall. You're 130 away, 125 from Drake. All right, time to restock your wards. Time to get ready for the climactic fight of this game. Sooning held on against top esports at Drake fights. Now it's TES's turn to do the exact same. Free. this story of this game has been just such calculated and calm play from Sooning. Look at these, these cooldowns, these resources they're using just to play safely. The Bard ultimate on the Baron, the Orn ultimate just to clear out the wave. 
They know that they don't have to roll the dice here uh, against top esports, and they're just biding their time, calculating, using these to uh, to wait for the dragon. 50 seconds left on arrival. I believe the Orn ultimate will sync up very shortly with that. So uh, timely usage here, and they should be able to get the setup. I think the the key component that might be missing though will be the vision around this because they do need somebody to mark Leona. If if they mark Leona and they keep him from getting that big engage, they don't have to worry about too much else. Since Carso used his flash on the mid pick on Huan Feng previously, he's not going to be uh, the extra crazy mobility playmaker um, as he would be if he still had that cooldown. I want to point out Majize comes through for Knight at seven stacks. If he wins a fight at all, it's amazingly gold efficient. It's only mediocre right now, but he needed the power spike because this is the fight that matters. Max CDR on top lane, Max CDR on the AD carry. Another ult comes off, tags two, and look at this health bar for Huan Feng. It's down below half HP, but be careful of the re-engage. It's gonna be Yuan Jack kind of just marking and stuck in the 1v5. Health bar's running out, tries to pop block it, tries to flash to safety. Can they finish one off? The smite fight gonna come through easily for Karsa, and the health bar's a solo. SOFM is in the danger zone. Is the re-engage for Jackie Love enough? Gets some low, goes in 1v3, but is stunned and shut down. That is far too much, burns the flash to die. Karsa <laughs> finds the kill on Angels, though, and they do find a single kill back. Ulti across the wall, not going to mean too much. Out they walk, just barely. Top Esports get the one for one, and they claim the Drake they needed. Garza is such a good bowler, he could do it with his feet, Freak. Kicks him right <laughs> in for the last kill there. Full strike, he knocked up the whole team, got the damage. That was such a clean kill there for Garza on the backside, and it honestly turns into mid tower pressure getting a kill, uh, plus objective four top esports. And critically, they deny the soul point, and this is a big soul, this is ocean soul. So, Yuan Jia, you know, going in there, he had a risky job to pull off, and he did it, he survived, he got out to the backside. Jackie Love, not so successful with his risky play. Yeah. And this is definitely an aggressive move that you know and associate with him, trying to flash in for that kill, but there Ooh. it is. Sword Art. Kills the team, un, you know, accidentally, but now the fight towards Vin, he is slowed. He's going to be in a really bad spot. I mean, he's got flash, but it's just not going to matter. You don't have a good way out of this one. Kill comes through to 3-6-9. He gets his first kill of the game. And top esports feel they may have turned the corner now as they have gotten kill after kill. It started 3-3. Three and three. It's now 6-4 to four in their favor kill-wise, and looks like Baron's on the plate. Yep. They're also turning the pages here as Knight now with 11 stacks on that Medjai's after the consecutive plays here from top esports yeah. 25 seconds left on the orn he does have teleport once he arrives sofm no ulti but does have smite and they got to be careful about what this one's going to look like it's a 5v4 they found the stun on angel this time over the wall jackie love finds the damage he needs easy pick right there and it's sofm against the world now now bin could tp in 10 seconds some time bought by sword our ult's going to come through steal the blue i do believe Maybe SOFM got it, but regardless, the Baron is still being attacked, and SOFM cannot join this one. Top Esports, it's their turn to find the comeback. Yuyanja, Leona ultimate right when Zoe pops back with her ultimate there. He just clapped Angel right back to the fountain. Takes away any opportunity for Sooning that they possibly were going to look for. Jackie Love follows up on his lane partner's stun, goes over, gets the kill, and Top Esports fire back in such a big way. Okay, 5,000 gold. The Red Bull Baron, I think it's going to be more than 1,500 this game. It feels like they've got what they need. Sword Art going to be found out, though, right in front of the opposing team. But the knockup comes through for Ord, and they're going to kill Jackie Love yet again, his third death of the game. And it's time to run away for poor Leona. Ben going to flash for the knockup, and they may just find that kill. The clap almost found. He can't quite reach his target. And they will get away. A shockwave on a two forces the ult, but they could find Knight. He's forced to flash away now as well, but there could be more. No root just yet for Wan Fung. Knight not going to go to sleep, just barely. Barely keeps his eyes open, walks away, but still mid lane will drop top as pushing. top lane tier two is killed by 369. Yeah, remember, you're, you're doing this play, these kind of rage plays versus a team that has Baron. Yes, you're frustrated that you just lost out in that big exchange, but 
even if you do chase down these kills, there's no there's no objectives left on the map, no dragon to fight over, no nothing by the Baron pit, and the waves are pushed against you, so you can't even, you know, exchange with a a tower after that. Meanwhile, Gangplank with a Baron down there, it's now level 16, 3, 6, 9. Infinity Edge full crit build here with the Trinity Force for him, and he's about to show you why you want to get his hands on that Gangplank. Yeah, he's rich so far. I mean, Every G2 fan still knows what Ben did on Gangplank in the group stage. And 369 open for a similarly sized play here in the world semifinal. Defensive control ward. And we know, again, Drake spawns in one minute. Ocean Soul would probably tie this game based on how much gold Top Esports has in their favor. That feels like about what it would do. And put it back on equal footing. But so far in the driver's seat is the red team. Red buff goes over to Huan Feng. Easy fight over the wards, but Top Esports, they own most of the jungle. They own the roads in. And they've paid for them themselves here, and Soon Ning gonna have to fight through a lot of vision to get a fight for this Drake. And it actually feels like, you know, with the way that uh, it's going now for TES, like the, the team fights are gonna look so good for them. They've got, well, here we go. Ward over the wall, looking at SOFM. They're gonna find a lot of CC. The kick of the wall can make it easy. They could find this kill, no problem, but he's gonna get back to safety. Looking at the kill already, though the solo on one side and the Ezreal on the other. These are gonna be snipes on both sides of the map now. Top Esports, two for zero. They want mid lane, sorry, bot lane tier two. Still 10 seconds left on the Baron buff. They baited a fight. They don't care about the Drake, they want the base. All right, Baron buff should allow them the keys to that base, Freak. Baron buff on this extra wave. They will melt through this turret. It's gonna be the inhibitor now as well. Is there gonna be enough to defend this one? We are 25 seconds away from the respawns. The inhibitor is gone. The Nexus turrets are in the eyes of top esports. The LPL champions want to be the one to hoist the trophy. And they will simply take the inhibitor and walk away. Still 10 seconds on meaningful respawns. SOFM cannot be in range to smite in time as long as they take down this Drake quickly. But there's always a chance for a big play. There's always a chance that somehow you turn it around. Vision being played over. Angels alive walking. SOFM just now spawns. And this should be killed before he can smite. This should be killed before there's any chance to steal. Sort of away from the engage. Juan Funk's still waiting around. Maybe he can find something miraculous. Carso blocks the W, gets the smite, no problem. And Drake count now two to three. This is a series of teams sitting on Soul Point, Freak. Yeah. And this is a takeover from the opposition. This time around, TES. Their solo lane's getting massive right now. 15 pages now in Knight's Book after this play. He's able to get the uh, assist there with the Oriana ball. This time around, Yan Jia finds the engage onto SOFM, and then Jackie Love follows up with the snipe. That bottom lane has really been in sync this series so far. That is a death cap on top of that stacked Medjai, mm -hmm. by the way. Oh, but it might not be 15 stacks anymore. He's going to find himself slowed. Shockwave on three, still killed off. Sort out the target. Karsa going to go bullying yet again, but is it going to be enough? The barrels, it's 800 damage and a flash follow. And Karsa's here. Can he find the kill on his old teammate? They played 200 games together. Right now, Tuan Fung back over the wall. He finds a low health bar. He can't go for any more, though. Another kill comes across. Suning, take the fight two to one so far. Far, but there's blood in the eyes. These health bars are low, but there's not enough easy target access. Sooning actually win the fight, and they can take some more gold. Ooh, yeah, just barely. They can push the minion wave out, but they are playing with fire. That is Jackie Love Ezreal with a red buff right now. If you fall prey to an engage here, Yu Yanja with flash, Jackie Love can definitely snipe the extra members. So they call off the push from the side of Sooning. They back away with that little amount of gold. Now, all these upgrades for Orn are being handed out. You know, we had the Molten Edge down there uh, just, just handed out as well. So Sooning definitely have a lot of this late game value too. And it's a huge pick on the Knight, as we're talking about, because of the Medjais. Uh, taking down those stacks really is important because they're getting multiplied by the Death Cap that he's got in inventory. Uh, since they try to commit so much here, though, you know, that teleport from Bin is actually going to be big as they try to play the map afterwards, and it, and it becomes a, uh, a push and pull here since Gangplank 369 is incredibly massive, and he's gone the crit build. The pros of the crit build versus, you know, the Leandries, which a lot of people really like versus champs like Jin that have to sit there uh, in the ultimate, is the big explosions. And that might be important in this fight because we're starting it yet again. Jin right behind the team. He's ready to battle for this one. So it is a five on five. Ultimately, Bin's Orn ult does not land, and it's going to be nothing picked up here. Two, one, and two still regardless. Stone plate there. Warmog's coming up soon. 
We have 95% crit chance for 369 until it becomes a shield. Not any higher. SOFM has to. Oh, they're going to kick him out of the respite. And Jackalip finds the kill. Plus, they find a stun onto Sword Art. And Karsa follows. He followed him to China. He's going to follow him for a kill if he can. That's going to be Sword Art just barely living, but they've killed Wan Feng. And it's only three left alive for Suning. They're running away as fast as they can. 369, if you can find those barrels, we'll find another kill. Gets rid of the slow, but it's now stuck inside the base. A drowsy Lee Sin will stay alive. Karsa's going to be fine. Fine. Knight shoves the team away, and it's time to go for the Nexus itself. The inhibitor number two in the mid lane will fall. And a 5v3 for a solid 20 seconds may just signal the end of game two. A 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 gold lead. The turrets are going to fall down inside this Nexus. And when can the defense even begin? They find CC, they look for the target, but you don't want to go for tank bar. They will knock down the turrets, and they will go for the Nexus itself. But Angel is not finding any damage. Ben is back on the fountain, and Toppy's Sports know they have done the job. Tied the series one to one, and we got a series on our hands. Mark it off with a bingo card. <laughs> Honestly, where was SOFM going? What in the heck, right? Past the Raptors, deep into enemy territory. He gets picked off. Carsa boots him out of his own ultimate. And just like that, TES finish off this game, bringing it back to even in this series.